Hey, intrepid viewers, and welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at the Devil's Eight. This is a Kickstarter demo of not a rhythm game, as this would appear, but a musically driven action game. So I'm not actually playing right now, because this game is very um, quick and requires a lot of focus to the point where it is beyond me to even attempt to play this game and talk at the same time. So you can see there's kind of some QTE stuff. This is the first boss, this is Limbo. Uh, so it's, it's, he's a tutorial boss, which is why you have these prompts. So you don't have these prompts in the next boss. This video is going to be two bosses, the only two bosses in the demo. Limbo, uh, followed by Lust. Uh, each is a very different song, and this kind of, you know, they fight to that song. They, their attacks are more or less timed with the song, but the player actions are in no way restricted by the beat or the rhythm. So it's not like a, it's not like a traditional rhythm game. There's a bug right there, I get pulled back. I'm not sure it's up with that, that's a little weird one. This is almost a flawless run, but you'll watch me get creamed in a second. So, um, I guess more about this game. Uh, I wanted to mention the fact that this music, I think all the music in this demo is by a person or group of people who are on SoundCloud are named Westrum? I'm not sure who it is, but you can check out more of the music here. Because uh, they have the sound on there, they have the sound, this theme for Limbo, they have this theme, theme for Lust, and they have a theme called Greed, which we don't see here, but um, we, will, we do hear it at the end of the video, because the intro cinematic uh, contains it, which I, for some reason, play at the end, I'm not sure, I'm not sure why. Um, but also set it on the Kickstarter page as being a musical contributor is Scarlet Moon, which... They contributed a bunch to the Omega Strike soundtrack, which we did a complete Let's Play through of uh, a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago. Uh, most importantly, they did my favorite song on that soundtrack, so I'm really looking forward to hearing hearing more of the songs in this game, as well as seeing how the other enemies look um, in juxtaposition with that, not juxtaposition, I don't know, in sync? With, in, in com combined? And combined with that, I guess. Um, one thing I'm not sure of in this game is, so you'll see, like, the main, the main, jeez, this is where I just I fail. The main mechanic behind the game is you dodge, and there's that bar in the bottom right, and every time that fills up, uh, you get a shield, or you get a charge, which you can expend to gain a shield, and the shield lasts for, I don't know, like, one second, maybe? And any attack, uh, that you get hit with in that one second kind of gets, like, reflected? You can see him like rub his hand, so it appears to be doing damage. Now, one thing I'm not sure about is if you beat these bosses by dealing enough damage or reflecting enough attacks, or if it's simply a function of survive to the end of the song. I believe it's the former where you just deal enough damage, but I'm not 100% sure. You also notice a few seconds ago uh, there's an A prompt, so if you're ever hit by a thing, you can hit A to, um, kind of like, like, recover in the air and land on your feet, as opposed to getting, like, you know, lay on your back and getting slaughtered. So if you don't do this QTE right, that final Y, both the bosses end with a Y prompt like that. If you don't do that properly, you just die straight out. So you could do a perfect run and lose to that. And I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I also don't think the Y prompt is super duper strict. I think that uh, you can hit it pretty early on. I didn't hit it immediately because it didn't seem to work, but for Lust, uh, you get two Y prompts, and the first one I hit very early, because I definitely failed it once, which was horrible. And there's another one which is more like um, a key mashing QTE prompt, which is a little weird. It's not clear what the difference between those two is visually, I just kind of had to guess it. So both of these bosses, actually, it's a cool story. <laughs> cool story, bro. This video is all one take. This is not edited at all. I basically booted the game up and, uh, beat both bosses in one go, uh, but that was kind of just like me decided, like, I was like, I'm going to record this after all. That was after me having spent, I didn't time myself, I don't know, in the neighborhood of half an hour, certainly not much less than half an hour, possibly much more than half an hour, I'd say 30 to 40 minutes, uh, beating these two bosses. They're definitely, it's not easy. At first, you definitely have to play a little bit, you know, like 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 a boss. It's, it's a boss, so you have to learn their patterns, figure out what means what, how to react to win. Um, 
you know, just that kind of thing. Like you'll see here, I'm trying to use my shield to reflect back more than one attack at once whenever I can. Also important thing about this fight is you can store up to two shield charges. So uh, whenever I have two, I always try to expend one as soon as possible to try and deal more damage because if you're if it's not charging, then it's not it's, you know, it's wasted time essentially, and you can use that for an attack. But I don't want to burn both because I do want to have one as an emergency escape because uh, especially with the first few runs on on this boss more than the last boss even, uh, it's just it gets a little hard to keep track of things as you can probably tell. So after in this boss after beating the pink inverted side, the initial side, I spend most of my time here on the blue side. I feel like the blue side has more uh, quick attacks, so it's it's easier to get uh, reflect multiple things at once. Um, I will flip back over to the pink side whenever I'm getting like pinched between these lasers. So you'll see the two laser walls move towards me. I failed there, but in general that's the kind of situation where I flip back to pink. But in general I try to stay off of pink because She's usually not doing super fast attacks. Like here I can maybe get a couple, but also I really find these laser walls to be a bigger hazard than the moving blue lasers. Because they take up more space, they usually leave me in a more restricted space, so um, I'm more reliant on my shield charges and I can't use dodges uh, as a defense mechanism as easily. I didn't talk about dodges. Obviously you can move left to right in this game, but you can also left trigger, right trigger to do a roll, which is super important. There, uh, as far as I can tell, there are no iframes on the roll. It's purely there as a um, uh, literal just move into a safe, like, you know, move your hitbox out of the way kind of thing. So I think that's pretty much everything in Important. Um, Devil's Eight. I'm pretty sure this is going to be eight box bosses. You can shield through that thing. You can move while shielding. Um, they don't handle that well. Most of the things, I feel like with Limbo, the hits deal way more damage, but I did notice that I was blocking certain things. I got healed. Oh, I got healed here too. Okay, so blocking certain things. I don't think everything. Blocking certain things heals you. Um, here we go to Super Hexagon. I don't know why that's even in here, but it's kind of cool to have the perspective shift. That's a little harder. I'm trying to dodge roll. Um, I was going to say something else about the shield. Oh yeah, the the, da the attacks in less attacks seem to be much less damaging, which is good because there's a lot more of them. So you get you get just this you know death by a thousand cuts a lot more. I just shield through both of these because there's no way I can get around in time. You gotta keep quick here because it's super hard. The camera change makes it really easy to get hit. I definitely died a couple times on that camera tilt back to normal camera mode. And then ending this boss is a little weird too, because I think, like, it's like an estate thing. Like, I don't think the boss will end until you jump on a platform. I don't know if he'll attack you, but I'm not sure what indicates him to get on the platform either. So here's, here comes the YQTE that I failed the first time I saw it, which was super aggravating. Okay, there I hit it super early, clearly. Here's where I spam Y, which is interesting. And then we get it to be continued, which is exciting. So after this bit, we are going to see the intro cinematic, which automatically played and I kept recording because it's super freaking cool. So let's watch that. Um, I want to be mostly silent during this, probably. We'll see. The first thing I wanted to point out, though, though is the hero clearly looks different. I think, right? I think the character we just were, maybe maybe in certain frames, like there, maybe it's just a color scheme that's confusing me. But I feel like the shoulders and helmet look a lot more medieval. Like so, here that's the same. That looks similar. Maybe it's not. Maybe it, maybe it doesn't change. So I don't know how much plot there's going to be in this game. I believe this is the soundtrack for Greed, according to Westeros Restaurantos. SoundCloud page, which implies that might be Creed? I don't know. That, that, that war machine. No, this is, this is Creed's. Maybe it's the same track. I don't know. Uh, that looks, that looks, that looks very war to me. Very wrath. I'm not sure which eight, the Devil's Eight are in here. They do show us at the very end of this, but, uh, it's very brief. I didn't read all of them. It's not, it's not, I remember thinking it wasn't like the traditional eight, like, sins. It was, um, like, kind of just like a oh, interesting, mostly that, but a couple off ones. Like, see, so you got gluttony, lust, limbo, greed, wrath, heresy, violence, and fraud. 
So who knows what that is. Also, the logo confused me for a bit because it's Devil's 8 and there's like a 3 in the background. Like, what's Devil's 8 3? But it's because the V in Devil's 8 is big. So V and 3, Roman for 8. This looks like Glutton and Me. I'm not sure why we see him at the end. It could be Greed. Were Glutton and Greed both on that list? I already forgot. We were instead of a giant mouth. So he's like, he's got a bunch of mouths and we're instead of a giant mouth. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Anyway, I have a link to this Kickstarter in the description below or a link to a page with a link to the Kickstarter as always. So hopefully you guys check it out. I know I backed it already. Looking forward to more. Signature catchphrase.